Today we're going to do an unboxing on the new Fast Fuel Line return kit, plus I'll show you how to install it in a fuel tank and a couple of tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. So this Fast Return Line kit is pretty simple, but there is a couple little details I'd like to show you on it. So this is used in a factory style tank where you don't have an option with an aftermarket in sump type of tank pump kit like uh, Aeromotive makes uh, that you've seen here on the channel before. This will add a return line to that tank without having to go through any other, you know, welding or cutting or whatever. It is a riv nut style piece. Um, it comes with a dash six ORB style fitting, which we see here. And the way it, it all kind of goes together is fairly simple. But if you've ever used like a riv nut, it's a blind way of creating a, a quick, easy seal, um, you know, piece that kind of all goes together you know, within a blind side where you can't get to the other side and put on a nut or or weld or whatever. So all you gotta do is run the bolt down through here and then as you tighten the 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 screw, the bolt up, it will pull the material from the bottom and buckle it at the bottom of the tank. So, you know, the, the seal obviously goes on there, it all drops down into the tank and you know, like I said, just wrench it down until it uh, all tightens up and you're ready to go. So again, it's not overly complicated, but there are a couple little details I'd like to show you uh, on the drilling of the hole and on the, uh, you know, how to tighten the thing up. So the first thing you do is just decide where you're going to put the return line at. Now I'm going to use just a regular sheet of 18 gauge sheet metal to show you um, a little bit of how the thing goes together. See it on both sides so you can get a good feel of how it looks when it goes together. Now with this type of deal, you know, a step drill is about the easiest way to do this. And I'm going to show you a little tip here in just a quick minute on how to use a step drill. But again, we're just going to reference a little mark in here, uh, hammer it home, and then we'll be ready to go uh, with uh, you know, using the step drill. Now, one little tip I learned on using a step drill is to mark it with some painter's tape so you'll know exactly where the line is to stop when you're drilling. So if you use a, a size gauge, you can kind of put the step drill in and you'll know how deep it's going to go when you're drilling. You don't want to over drill it because if you do, well, it's not really, uh, when you can add, uh, you can take away uh, size on a hole, but you can't add to it very easily. That's for sure. So a little, uh, like I said, a little reference in, on how deep it's got to go, mark it, wrap some blue painter's tape around it, and then it's a really quick, easy visual for you as the step drill spinning so you'll know exactly how far to go and uh, not uh, take it any further than it needs to go. So a little tip that uh, you know I learned years ago uh, after I made quite a few mistakes with uh, <laughs> with drilling something a little too deep, and you can use it on a regular drill bit or whatever, but... You know, the step drill is a little bit easier, um, you know, as far as uh, that goes, because there's a lot of different depths on uh, the one drill. So anyway, a uh, nice quick little tip there. Now, one little tip that I commonly see is with a any type of drill bit is to throw a little grease on there to catch the shavings and the material that you're cutting out of a, a hole uh, will stick to. So we're going to give that a try here. I think you're going to find the results fairly interesting uh, as what happens here, but it's a very, very common tip. You're going to see it all over YouTube and, and uh, you know, other forums or whatever to help keep control over, you know, the shards of material that are, uh, you know, coming out of there. So uh, I want you to, to get a good look at this. Uh, again, it, it, I think you're going to be surprised by the results. So we'll grease this up really well, uh, add a lot of material or add a lot of uh, grease to it so it'll catch as much of that stuff as possible. So let's get started on drilling the hole. Now, I've elevated this a little bit so the step drill won't interfere with drilling into the bench top. And I've also placed a white sheet of paper underneath here so we can see what actually falls in the tank and what does the grease pick up on the, on the bit. So, it, again, it's just a regular step drill. You're just going to drill it down to your depth uh, that you put on with the painter's tape. So watch that. And then it's just a matter of drilling the hole to see how it all came out. 
So, again, when you're done here uh, and we remove the, uh, the top of our uh, tank here, you can see exactly what is left on the white paper underneath it. And quite a bit of material is going to end up in the tank. So my suggestion here is two things. One, the grease does work. It does keep a lot of material out of it. There is some material that is saved um, from going into the, the tank. But in all honesty, you're going to have a lot of little metal shavings that are going to get into the bottom of that tank. It's, there, it's just a reality. I've never, ever done this where things have been perfect and it's kept all the shavings out of there. So two things on this. One, I would have a completely dry tank. And once you're done drilling, hit it with a shop back. I would not use grease at all. I don't think it works. All the grease is going to do is it sticks to the little shavings that fell into the tank and it's going to be harder to clean up. Now, here's another reason why I don't like using grease. When you are done drilling the hole, you always check it to make sure that there's no little shard sticking up out of there, which when you drill a hole, especially in material that's this thin, you're always going to have a little bit of stuff that you're going to have to clean up. So if you hit it with a file, anything you file off is going to end up into the bottom of the tank, and you're still going to have to clean that out of there. So it's always best to start with a very, very dry tank or even a brand new tank, whatever, and then go in through one of the other access holes on the tank with a shop back and clear all, all out of there. That way you get the best possible hole and not any shards and ugly stuff, whatever, sticking out of there, and you don't have to worry about what dropped into the tank. You're going to hit it with a shop back and clean it out of there anyway. Now it's just a matter of uh, assembling the fitting here to install it. So first thing, just make sure it fits down in the hole. There's no issue there. Um, you only get one shot at this. So make sure you put the little gasket on there first. Don't mess that up or you can't go back. Uh, and then uh, drop the little bolt down then in there. Now when this bolt and everything goes down the hole as it is. And as you tighten the bolt up, it's going to compress the bottom side of it. Uh, it's a riv nut. So it compresses the bottom side up against the uh, bottom of the tank. And it will compress to hold it in place. Now I'm going to show you two different situations here with this. I'm going to show you one where it's just barely tight and I'm going to show you one where it's over tight and what it can do for you as far as leaking goes. So let's get started on that. Now once you got the fitting assembly down in the hole, all you got to do is use an, I use an AN style wrench just to keep from galling it up because it's aluminum on aluminum and then uh, just a regular ratchet on the top and just start tightening it up. Now It'll be a little tight as you're trying to tighten this thing down and you will start to feel it as it just starts to compress into the up against the uh, the bottom side up to the bottom side of the tank. Now you will feel it a little bit and if you rotate try to rotate the fitting now it is in there securely. It is about as tight as it's going to be. Um, there's you can continue to tighten it from here, but it is effectively sealed. You've gotten it right where it needs to be. It doesn't need to go any tighter. And we're going to show you what that looks like here from the bottom side as well, so you can see what that looks like and how compressed that is uh, up against the bottom of your tank. Now here's what it looks like from the bottom side. It's just starting to compress. It's holding it securely in the hole. You can't turn the fitting in there without putting the AN wrench on it and, and cranking on it just a little bit. So it's secure where it is. Everything is perfect. There's no need to go any tighter with it. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you over tighten it, what it looks like on the top side and the bottom side and some of the ugly things you can get yourself into. And now I'm going to show you what this looks like when you over tighten it. Now you can crank this thing down pretty aggressively and and you'll see that on the bottom side here, it's starting to compress a little bit more than, you know, than what it did initially. And that's probably not a bad thing. Maybe you'll think it'll, it'll hold tighter up, up, up against the bottom of the tank. You know, it'll seal better. You won't have any issues with it moving, whatever. But what you're causing it to do is two things. One, you are weakening the rivnut, and some of the cheaper ones that are out on the market 
will will break. I have seen them break, and then now you've got to fish that out of the tank. Um, the other side of what's happening to this is on the top side, and I'm going to show you that here in just a quick second. But over-tightening these is not the way to go. I know it sounds like a good idea, but it's not. Now, here's what it did on the top side. What it did is you over-tightened it, and it started to compress the gasket out from underneath it. That's why they leak. This is the re biggest reason why people complain about these is because they were over-tightened, and you can see the gasket pushing out. If you get to this point in it, well, you're going to probably have a leak. And here's just a quick peek on how it looks like on the bottom side when it's over-tightened. It does have a nice, good compression to it. And again, some of the cheaper ones on the market will get this type of compression. The problem is the material's too thin. And because people can over-tighten these fairly easily, they are easy to snap off. And well, like I said, when it snaps off and you pull the bolt out of it, that bottom part just drops down into the tank and then you've got that to worry about. So again, I'd rather have a little bit more stouter one. This one by Fast is, is certainly thick enough that it doesn't have these issues and you won't have the over-tightening problem if you're careful with it. And that's it. Now you've installed a return line or a vent line into your top of your factory tank. Now you can't use this as a pickup point. It will leak for sure. Uh, and I think we see how that, why that would happen. The gasket doesn't really, isn't really rated for that. And uh, you're not going to get enough sealing on the backside. The two biggest tips you have to take away from this video is don't over tighten it. Be very careful about that in anything you drill is going to get shavings into the tank no matter if you use grease on it or not. It's a nice idea. It just doesn't work in practicality. So, hey, if you thought the video was cool, please do me a huge favor. Hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed before, please, I'd really appreciate your subscription. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next tech video. Thanks, guys.